Okay, Dave and Christine, you guys can unmute yourself. I mute everybody, so we can start. <clears throat> All right. So guys, well, good morning, everybody. You are for a treat because you're going to be listening to a couple that are very dear to my heart. They are in Orlando, Florida. Dave and Christine Dill, man, this couple, they're going to blow your mind how they <laughs> are destroying this business. So listen to what this couple is going to share with you, okay? So Dave and Christine, the call is yours. Thank, so, you, yeah, thank Francisco. you, Francisco. It's pretty awesome that you had you introduced us because I'm definitely going to talk about you in a minute. <laughs> um, just first, I just want to say thank you to everybody who hopped on here. Um, we have some amazing, amazing leaders um, around us. And I just want to say thank you for all your leadership. I'm also super appreciative of the, you know, the people in our business, whether it's your first day or, you know, you're, you've been in here a while building a business like us too. Um, we really do appreciate your time. And uh, I hope what we share with you today, um, you take something away or it's of some value to you. Um, but regardless, we just appreciate your time and thank you for getting on. Um, so I'm going to jump into our story, but first I'm Dave Dillman. This is my wife, Christine. Hey everybody. And um, <clears throat> so our story kind of begins, I guess we'll just start when we mm -hmm. started with this opportunity. So um, we were introduced to this opportunity from Melissa Lucas. Thank you, Melissa Lucas. <laughs> um, we were friends and we worked together in another company. And about the end of last year is when she picked up the, call, the phone and she called me and just kind of told me what she found here. So, um, you know, we talked for a little bit. She was super excited. She told me, you know, what she knew at that time and then sent me some information. My husband and I talked about it that night. And then the next morning, he found himself on the phone with Ricky Durant. Yep, the big Ricky Durant. Um, and so I asked Ricky, I had already said, already had decided we were gonna do this. I wasn't super excited about doing it, but um, this is what was gonna happen. And I said, all right, tell me what I gotta buy. Because I figured this is where the conversation was going. And he said, he asked me if I'd tried the product first. And I said, nope. He's like, well, you're not buying anything until you try it. And that kind of, um, that made me feel really a different way about our conversation. I became much more open and optimistic about what I was going to experience. And uh, Ricky said, he asked where I lived and he said, all right, give me a few minutes. So we got off the phone and then uh, in a few more minutes we got back on. He had found Francisco who um, lives about an hour and a half away. And he's like, I'm going to put you in touch with Francisco and you guys are going to meet up and you're going to try the product. So Francisco and I uh, live about an hour and a half away. And so each of us drove 45 minutes. We met in the middle. And, um, you know, one thing I learned about Francisco as we were going is that I would be no financial benefit to him. And this was completely out of his belief in what he was doing was worth doing and that he had something completely amazing that he was going to bless as many people with. And his business has definitely been rewarded for that. And, um, you know, it's just something we carry on with us through our business. So we sat there in a Starbucks for about an hour and a half. He dosed me up and about 15 minutes in, he could tell that something had changed. Like I felt like happy and calm about 15 minutes later. And we just connected and talked about life. And then, you know, next thing I know, I'm like, I got to bring some home to my wife. So here I am at Starbucks buying, <laughs> buying all this stuff out of some guy's trunk that I just met. And, um, you know, kind of weird, but anyway, I, I then drove home and for anybody who lives in Florida, um, one of our main expressways here is I-4 and I guarantee you that it's one of the worst expressways in the world. It is straight out of a video game. Everybody's <laughs> going hundred miles an hour through the city and I just got the windows down. I'm listening to my music. I feel great and um, brought it home to my wife. We shared it yep. and, uh, and that was pretty much it. That's it. So um, I think my conversation with Melissa was maybe on a Friday and that Saturday is when he talked to Ricky and went and met Francisco. And I think we were up and running by Monday. So it was really fast. Um, that's one of the best parts about this. You know, that product is super high impact. We fell in love with it the very first day. So we kind of just wanted to get on here today and talk to you guys a little bit about um, what we've done to build our business. So just hopefully we have some nuggets for you, um, some tools that we've used that have helped us along the way. Um, 
First, we're going to kind of talk about how we use three-way chats. We do most of our business on Facebook Messenger, so we really use those three-way chats um, to do everything from prospecting to onboarding to training um, and just to keep the communication lines open with our team. So we really love three-way chats. Um, and then we also wanted to talk about how we lo help launch people, um, their business. When they come in and they join us in business, we work with a first post that has been really successful with most of the new people that come on. So we're going to talk about that first post and what that looks like. And then we also walk with them one on one while that first post is up and we kind of train them through their first sale. So it's really important for us to try to get anybody new to our team their first sale within the first ideally within their first one to two days. So 24 to 48 hours is perfect. Um, so we try to help walk them through that. So we'll kind of talk about what that looks like. And then we're gonna to touch on uh, follow-up. So this, we find follow-up is a place where a lot of people get kind of lost and they kind of feel weird and kind of feel like they're bothering people. So we wanna talk about what follow-up looks like because a lot of times um, people don't know when to follow up, how many times they should follow up, what they should say. So we're gonna to touch on that a little bit too. All right, so let's jump right into it. So three-way chats have been one of the building blocks of what we've been what we've done here just just a total one of our best tools because uh we find that people are busy. they will you're know, very busy time is an issue um and they're much more open to getting on a three-way chat quicker than a call so we're easy it's easier for us to start a start a dialogue with um you know, somebody about the products or the company in a chat than it is to try to line up a call with, you know, four or five people involved. Um, there, in our business, there are, there is a place for calls. Um, there's a place for chats. We just find that it's, it's easier to get more people on the chat, um, whether it's our team or, you know, somebody that a, a prospect or a customer, um, that's where we start. So the chats have been a really great tool for us. Um, we use them in our team for prospecting. So um, anyone on our team knows that they can, if they're talking to a prospect about business or about um, the product, they can throw us in a chat with their prospect. So they don't even have to ask us first. We know if they throw us in there that what we're there for. So we actually get excited when we see like Lynn or someone on our team, it says like you, you've been added to a group and we get excited because we know that we are talking to, we're going to about to be talking to a prospect of somebody on our team. So we use it both for business we use and um, products. And it's a great tool because um, it helps us also train anybody on our team. So when they throw us in a chat, they edify us real quick and they kind of introduce who we are to their prospect. And then they also tell us who that prospect is and what they're there for, whether it's product or whether it's business. And then we kind of take over. So we're there basically to handle any objections and to answer any of those questions. And what we love about the chat as opposed to a call, not only is it convenient, because we can answer the questions at any time and they can respond, the prospect can respond at any time. So the convenience is key, but also because it's a great training tool and it helps the duplication on our team because our teammate who has put us in that chat is able to see how we are handling those objections and an answering those questions. And now they have that chat that doesn't go away as a resource for them so they can go through that at any time if those objections or questions come up, they can handle them better because they have that resource. And then not only that, they're able to train people that come into their business the same way because they have that as a resource. So we really love the three-way chats. And I love that even we, when we can go back in these chats and find out you know, information about them because a lot of times these conversations resurface a month later, two months yeah. later, and it's just a great resource for everybody to stay in touch. Um, one of the, our favorite parts about this three-way chat is how to help launch a new business um it for for us there's it's so thrilling to get somebody their custom their first customer in the first 24 to 48 hours um with the new rank of star um getting somebody off heading in that direction in their first few days of business is super exciting and when we launch somebody on their first post um we're very intentional about everything we they do so you know when they make that post they can walk away with anywhere from you know, five, 50 solid leads. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, you know, how we train that first post. So why don't we talk about first what that first post looks like? Yep. 
Um, so one of the things we do is when we get into the three-way chat is we ask the person, tell us, tell us what this product's done for you. What has your experience been so far? Yeah. So that's the great part about this product is it's, it's so impactful and it does so many different things to, to so many different people. So what it does for one person is not necessarily what it does for another. So we, um, we love be, that we are able to tailor what it, what this product does for someone specifically to their own business, right? That the reason why everybody is getting off to a fast start in this company is because we're able to leverage our own stories. We are have each been impacted by this product. We've each fallen in love with this product. And that energy that we are able to share, the passion we have for the product is, is really what people are buying into. They're not buying coffee. They're buying your excitement for the product. So as soon as somebody joins us in business, we go right for the launch. And with this company, another thing is our launches for us specifically for our team look very different than what they would look like in a different MLM company or any other online company, again, because it's tailored to the new person. So first we ask them, you know, what has this product done for you? And everybody's different. So it might be weight loss. Some people are, will say I lost seven pounds in 10 days. Some people will say I'm a lot nicer to my kids or some people might say I'm more patient at work or I have more energy or whatever they say, as long as it's positive, of course. Right. Mm -hmm. So we help them turn that into a post. So, um, first we tell them to take a happy selfie. So we want them to take a picture of themselves super happy in a well-lit area with a mug, with yeah. a coffee mug in their hand. No basements, no scowls. <laughs> happy. Let's yeah, we're happy. So they're going to take us a happy selfie and then we're going to tell them that that will be their post with the caption that would say, wow, I can't believe that's what's in this mug has just helped me X, Y, Z. So if it's the first example I used, it would say, wow, I can't believe what's in this mug just helped me lose seven pounds in 10 days. I am so excited to get started. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's the post. Simple. We're, yeah. We keep it very simple. Um, having their face in the post is super important. Um, we find that when we introduce and launch a business, um, what that prospects or that new entrepreneur's network will respond to most is their face, their happiness, and um, a simple statement about what this product's done. They're not over, they're not over speaking. They're not telling some huge long story. Right. Um, we just keep it so simple and we let the network respond. Yeah, so it's all about curiosity. And I'm sure many people on here have heard about that, like curiosity posts. And um, it's, it's super powerful, especially here in this first post, because when people join this business, most people on their Facebook don't know that they've joined a business. They don't even know that they're drinking this new magic coffee. So they should keep it that way. And with a post that doesn't even mention that it's even coffee, the people on their newsfeed are gonna be like, have FOMO, right? I would want to know what one of my friends are using if they lost seven pounds in 10 days or something that's help, helping them have more energy to run around with their kids, right? We all want to know that stuff. So that's where the curiosity comes in. So people in their network would, would comment and, um, like, what are you doing? What's going on? You got to tell me more about that. So that's what we're looking for there. Keeping the curiosity so that their personal network will start wondering what's going on. What are they doing? Asking questions. And if you don't have a testimony, like sometimes like us, we just joined in the business. Um, and our testimony isn't at the time wasn't, yeah. you know, a giant weight loss story or overcoming some huge personal hurdle. Um, if somebody just wants to join in business, um, we will have them use one of our testimonies. Yeah. So that's, no big deal. Um, most of our, most of the people on our team is, is worth, I'm going to get you. <laughs> most of the people on our team have joined um, because they have had an experience of the product. Most of the people were customers first, but we do occasionally get people that decide to join in business. And what we advise is they use, like if it was my direct, I would advise that they use my testimony. So I personally have lost 20 pounds so they could easily just still put a picture of themselves, still put a picture of themselves happy with the mug, but say differently, they would say, wow, I can't believe what's in this mug just helped my friend to lose 20 pounds. I can't wait to get started. So it can be used whether you have a testimony or not. Best is to use your own, but if you don't have one, of course you can use your upline 
or even in the customer, those testimony pages, you can use one of those. Yeah, and so at this point, like we like to cover too some social media tips that we've all heard, but are still very important if to continue the communication. Things like um, you're not gonna show the name of, of the, the product, product. You're or, not, company. or company. Um, you're not gonna have it in the comments. You're not going to show a picture of the actual product. Yeah, so never a picture of the front label um, or you know the front of the sticks. We never do that, especially in this first post. You want people asking you what, um, what you're doing and what the product is. If, if somebody were to put a post up like that and it set, showed the face of the product, what would, what would their network do? They would run to Google. They would check it out there. Yep. They would see links to eBay. They would see links to Amazon. They would or also see people. links. Yeah, they'd also see Google links that take them to other entrepreneurs. And um, it's just bad. It's bad for business all the way around, especially when it comes to Amazon and eBay. If you don't monitor this process correctly, um, you're going to put an, a potentially unsafe and ineffective product in the hands of people you love and care about. So, um, you know, it's not a silly rule or some strange tactic. There's actually a good reason behind it. Right. So you want the conversation to be you know, held with you. So if the person comes and asks you what you're doing, you're able to kind of navigate that conversation and give them the information that they're looking for instead of having them jump to Google and the first thing they see on there is gonna be somebody else's website. So um, that's why we do that. So that's very important. We always train on those specific social media tips. Um, and then we, have, we help them through the comments. So right before this first post, this is a super important piece of this. That first post is great, it works every time um but there's when somebody is about to do that first post again we go back to that three-way chat and we're we're in that chat and we are going to coach them through those comments and how to start a real conversation about this coffee so people are new to the business a lot of people that come into our team are new to the industry which is super cool we love that um but they don't know how to start a conversation about business. They don't even look at this as business and they don't have to. It's all about sharing a cup of coffee. So what that looks like is we ask them to tell us, you know, a few minutes before they're ready for that post. So we can allocate some time to walking them through this. And then as soon as comments come, comments um, will come and say, you know, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Oh, you got to tell me what's in that cup. What's in your mug? Um, and we simply, Tell them to respond with, girl, you're going to love this stuff. Let me send you a message. Or this stuff is fantastic. Let me send you a message. Again, in the comments, we are still not talking about the name of the product. We are still not talking about the name of the company. We are definitely not putting our customer link in there. Why? It's because people in the network are reading through those comments too. And if you answer the question that somebody's thinking, you don't give them the chance to ask. So now you don't even know that they're interested because they just saw the answer to the product name and the company name or your link. So you don't even know if they're interested. Um, so you're not even gonna have the conversation with them and you're not giving them the ability to ask you what you're doing. So again, in the comments, super important, still not talking about the name, still not talking about the company, still not showing pictures or links in mm -hmm. there. And you know, at this point it's, it's a great way to remind people like we're here to serve we have something we know can change lives so it's important to allow the you know the, the people who are commenting to interact freely ask ask questions and then be able to give them the information in a way that's personal and can help them yeah but um, in the comments there it's just hey, hey um this is amazing let me shoot you a message so what we train is just don't answer anything on Facebook to say, I will message you. And then we, we take that, teach them how to take it off Facebook into messenger. Some things that can happen in this process, like this is super exciting for us. Like we love being part of this, this process with people as they launch their business, but occasionally you get people that pop in there and they, they ask crazy questions or they say something super negative. Yeah. So we, we train our, our people to hide those comments. Yeah. Um, you know, if you delete it, you know, the person who made the comment knows, um, that it's gone and they may come back and they may say something else so so that's a super cool trick so I don't know if all of you know that but you can 
on your post, if somebody comments something that you don't like or is negative, you can actually hide it. So you can just hold it down and it'll give you an option to hide. And that allows the person who wrote that comment still think it's there, they'll still see it, but nobody else will see that, that it's hidden. So everybody else will scroll through the comments, they'll never see it, but the person that hit it, whether it's your mom or whoever, you don't want to know that you're hiding a comment from them, they won't know, they'll still think it's there. So it's a super cool trick, so you won't hurt anybody's feelings, but you don't have to have comments that aren't supportive of what you're doing on your post. Yeah. So, okay. Now we've, we've moved the conversation to messenger. So let's talk a little bit about that, what that looks like. Yeah. So this is something that was taught to us. Um, I'm sure many people on this train, the, this simple conversation that we have about introducing the coffee to people. Um, this is the system. This is the easiest way to start a conversation about coffee with people. So now you have somebody who's already commented or maybe even liked that first post or any business or any product post that you have. You have somebody that commented and you have said, uh, let me shoot you a message. So now we um, tell, teach them how to do this. So now we're back in that chat and we're talking through how they're going to respond. And the response would be something very simple. And it's just, hey, Sarah, thanks for commenting on my post today. How have you been? Have you heard of the happy coffee everyone's talking about? And then usually they say, no, no. <laughs> I have no idea. What is that stuff? Um, and again, that works for likes. So if somebody likes or loved or whatever on the post, same thing. Hey, Sarah, thanks so much for liking my post today. Have you been, um, have you heard of the happy coffee everyone's talking about? So again, they're probably going to say no, which is great. Um, so then we teach them just transition into their story. Like so very excited. Oh my gosh. Um, I can't believe I tried this. I tried this magical coffee it has done X, Y, Z for me. Um, I was super skeptical at first, but I'm so happy. I tried it. It's been amazing. Um, you've got to check this out. If I send you a couple videos, when do you think you'll have about 15 minutes to check them out? And I love this, like the, the fact that the, like at the end of that, we're asking a direct question because we want the, we want the prospect to start to invest themselves in the process. Um, we want them to commit and let them give you a time. And what that does is it frees you up from feeling like you're bugging. Mm -hmm. You don't have to feel like you're chasing anybody. If they said tomorrow at two, then you know sometime between 2 and 2.30, you can send them a message free and clear and just say, what did you like best about those videos? This all starts a process of having um, proper follow-up proper follow up and getting them to commit to engaging in the steps, watching the videos. If they feel like, oh, wow, they're going to check back with me, I probably should find a couple minutes to watch these videos. Exactly. It gives them a little more investment into this. Um, so let's be real. When we do ask that question, a lot of times people don't respond with a specific time or a specific date. They usually just say yes or okay, okay. thumbs up or okay. Um, they don't want to commit to a time. Totally fine, um, but doesn't matter. We're still planning on following up. So if somebody gives us a time, okay, we own businesses here, right? We have a business, we're sharing a product. So we got to take this seriously. If somebody committed to a time, it's our responsibility to now follow up with them at that time. So if they do say tomorrow or Wednesday, you got to make a notation in your phone, in your planner, wherever that you're going to follow up with that person at that time. If they don't give you a time, my rule of thumb is 24 hours. So if somebody just gives me a good old thumbs up, I'm going to follow up with them in 24 hours. So as long as they say yes, they give, you know, yes, or give me a time, they've basically given me permission to send them more information. So that's part of the process. I've asked, they've agreed. So now I'm going to send them a sh quick message that says, great, when you get a chance, check out these videos. And I send them a happy dose.com. So those videos are super important. They um, give information to the prospect without us having to give that information. So we're not salesmen. I don't know how many of you guys out there are salespeople, but we definitely are not. So we try to use the tools that have been given to us 
to help us make these sales. We are just sharing information here. We're sharing our story of a product we love and we're trying to give people as much information as they need to make a decision whether or not this product is something that they want to try because they think it will help them or not. So we send them those a happy dose.com um, so they can watch those videos and then we follow up right now we're into a follow up um, scenario. So this is really important. So this is where it all begins. Um, there's another tool that we use a lot that I like, I think we should touch on. Absolutely. So probably one of my favorite, favorite, favorite tools is um, the use of, you know, Facebook groups here. We're all part of, you know, team rise. So we have team rise community, um, amazing, amazing groups that just, um, keep layering on story after story after story of our amazing results. Um, for those of you that utilize these groups, you know the power of them. So these are customer testimonial pages. And collectively, the group have the Team Rise community, super powerful. I know our team uses another one. Um, I'm sure a lot of people and in their individual teams here also may have one. Whatever one you use, Use, use it, it. <laughs> pick one, one that you like and use it. And um, so we, we teach these new people to send a message. Okay, so now we're waiting for them to watch these videos. So we do have a little bit of time here um, and we don't wanna bother them, right? Cause they said two o'clock tomorrow. So we're not gonna keep bombarding them with messages. Like give them space, let them do their thing. But in the meantime, we can send them a message. We can invite them to that customer testimonial page and send them a message that just says, hey, Sarah, um, I just added you to this, our customer Facebook group. It's awesome. When you get a chance, please accept the invitation and go and check out what everybody else is saying about our awesome products. And that's it. And then on their own time, they can accept that invite and let that page kind of drip on them. And they can go, they're going to be nosy. They're going to go in there and they're going to see what everybody's talking about in that group too. And one thing I like to do, um, and I, I know not everybody does this, but when you get into the groups, um, I like to tag the prospect in the, the, an announcement post if there is one. Mm -hmm. But I like to treat them like I'm welcome, welcoming them into my home. So I would say something like, we're so happy to have you here. Um, you know, feel free to ask questions, engage. Thank you for your time. And then um, I look for a couple posts at this point that I think they might resonate with um, based on any information they've shared me and shared with me. And I go to those posts and I say, um, I had, saw this testimonial. I really thought of you. Um, you know, when you get a chance, can you please read this through? Thank you so much. And um, I try to make each step of this as personal as possible. Yep. And um, I find that, you know, whether I get a customer or not, I, I definitely start a, a building a relationship that way. And, and that's just better for everybody. And that's what this is, right? This is a relationship based business. Um, we don't have a storefront. I don't have my own, you know, business page. I am sharing coffee again, building relationships with people and trying to find people who resonate with my story or the stories that I'm sharing with them and trying to find if I have a solution for something that they need. So it's all about that relationship there, making it personal for them. Yeah, and then we move to the follow-up. So we've put them in this group. They're gonna yeah. they're gonna see a couple stories. They're gonna watch the video. So they've done. We've gone through two tools so far. So now we've given this prospect tons of information. Um, at this point, they have a lot of information where they're almost even able to make a decision for themselves. So we've sent them to ahappydose.com. Um, and we can follow up there. So if they told us two o'clock on Tuesday, we're gonna send them a message on Tuesday and it's gonna say, hey, did you have a chance to watch those videos that I sent you? And then we also ask, what did you like most about what you saw? And that question is super important. Again, we're, we're setting an expectation first that they liked something. So if they saw something they didn't like or they weren't sure about or just had a question, their mind is gonna shift to the positive of this experience and getting people to focus on the positive things is a key part of this. Yeah, and also it gives you an indication of what they're looking for. Exactly. Because, um, I mean, I can tell people all day that this product helped me lose 20 pounds, but if somebody doesn't want to lose weight, then I'm not talking to them. And there's so many more aspects um, to what this product can do than, than just that one thing. So I want to find out what they're looking for. And I can then tailor my responses to them geared up on what, what they're looking for. So whether it's energy, now we're gonna start having a conversation about how this helps me with my energy, with my crazy 
three kids to get through my day of work. Um, and then how that could help maybe help them through my story. And if I don't have energy from this product, great. I can find somebody that does that customer page. I use as a resource myself all the time. So if somebody says I need, I need, um, I was, I saw something that might help me with migraines or whatever. Again, we don't, we never say that we're going to treat anything. If a medical concern comes up, we every single time give them the information of the nutritional facts um, and, uh, and um, the ingredients and tell them to talk to their doctor. But a second step to that is if they say they have migraines, I will type migraines into the search bar of the customer testimony page. And if I'm good, testimonies are going to come up with people that, with migraines that this product has helped. I'm going to tag them in that post. Hey, Sarah, I saw this testimony. I immediately thought of you. I know you struggle with migraines. I did send you that information to take to your doctor, but I did see that this has really helped this person. Thought you might want to check this out. And so we're, we're, we're now engaging the process of listening. Um, yeah. If you find yourself at this point um, explaining your testimony again, um, telling all the great things about everybody of your customers already that have had this experience that love it. You're, you're talking too much. We, yeah. We're now in the step where we allow the tools to do the work for us. Um, so one of our favorite parts is at this point, if, if you're getting positive feedback from, from the prospect, go for it. Go for it. Like, why not ask for the sale? Like we don't go into target, find what we're looking for and then just put it down, walk away all the time. Yeah. I mean, some of us do, but um, they are interested. So it's okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's find out where they are in the process. Ask for the sale. Yeah. If anything, you're going to find out where they are. Like if they are, you know, are, they're ready to buy right now, which that's definitely going to happen. Um, or there's some people that need a little bit more information. And then there's going to be people that just are not ready yet. And that's okay you know, you're in business, so it's okay to gauge where your prospect is. And you can only do that by asking a question. So we just kind of go for the close. Like if, for example, if somebody had told me that they wanted to lose some weight, I would go right in and be like, okay, you know, after they've gone through the steps, I'd be like, that's awesome. You know, are you ready? What do you think? Are you ready? You want to lose some weight with me? I would just ask a question just like that. And so again, they're either going to say yes, or they're going to say, mm, I'm not sure yet. They're going to say, I got to wait till I get paid on Friday or they're going to be like, mm, I'm not sure yet, or, or they're not going to say anything at all. But at least I know based on their response where they are in this process of um, this follow up. Right. And we don't have to beg. Like we have something amazing and there are people that we interact with that are just ready to buy. They don't want to yeah. talk. They don't want to have this like long drawn out conversation over the course of three <laughs> days just to buy some coffee. Like Amazon the, doesn't talk to you. Right. Amazon does not talk to you. <laughs> Or in the does eBay. So <laughs> let's not short, let's make sure we allow those people to have the opportunity just to say, yeah, I'm ready to do this. Yeah. So ask. And how easy is it just to ask a simple question? Yeah. Just like, hey, what do you think? Are you ready to give this a try? And make it personal. Like, uh, my wife's language is great. Are you ready to lose some weight with me? Um, you know, are you ready to feel happy with me? You know, whatever. Like, it, again, we're, we're building a relationship. Um, one of the key things that we stress um, that we've seen so many different versions of this, um, we do not send the link it, yet at any point until they commit to buy. So our customer link, he's talking yes, about. Yes, so the customer link. We do not link. send our customer link um, you know, for the sale. We don't send that link to our prospects until they have said, yep, I'm ready to buy. Um, and that, you know, we do that for um, a variety of reasons. Um, but what happens when a customer gets your link? Um, let's say you posted it in the comments. Um, they're not going to engage you in questions. They're not going to get the opportunity to hear your story. They're not going to get a chance to be in the customer page. They're yeah. just going to go right to your link. They're going to look at the name of the product. And then, then they're going to do the other things that we mentioned. They're going to go to Google. They're going to go to their research. Yeah, because you know, they might want not, they probably don't want to start this long conversation with you about what this product is. They just want to make up their own mind and yeah. do it right there. So you're doing them a disservice by not letting them hear the stories of all these other amazing people, um, our own personal stories. So we do not send that. Yeah. So being in control of the conversation is super important because we're finding out what they need and we're trying to find out if we can serve that need. If 
we don't go through the, that follow-up process, giving the tools, giving the resources that we have, they're going to do the research on their own. And chances are they're not going to end up with a purchase with you. It's either going to be on Amazon or eBay or worse. They're going to click on somebody else's link, but they're going to find, if they want the information, they're going to find it out. So it might as well be in your control um, going through these simple steps of follow-up. And once we've made it through all these steps at this point, um, we call that qualifying. So if they've seen the videos and they've responded to us, if they've been in the customer page, um, they accepted the invite, we've tagged them in some testimonials. Um, often they'll give my comments a thumbs up or thank you. Um, they're engaging with us in the process, but then you know, they just kind of go quiet. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a perfect opportunity where we would feel comfortable offering a sample um, you know, we're all in the business together it, where samples come out of our home budget. Yep. Like this is important. So I want everybody who receives a sample from me to respect that. And if they're respecting the process, then I feel good about sending them a sample. Yeah. So if, if you even think about samples, probably in your own life, I know me, I get samples at the grocery store. I get samples when I go to like the makeup store or a department store in the mall and they give me a sample. I have no idea what that is and I bring it home. It sits on the counter. Nobody's really told me what that is. I have no investment in here. I have no, I have no idea what I'm trying. So it sits there and worse off, it could end up in the garbage. So we are super, um, uh, we're super intentional when it comes to our samples. We make sure people know what they're getting. We, we want to know why they want to try it. And they want, we want them to be excited. Like, oh my gosh, I'm about to try a product that's really is going to help me. And so we see our, our turnaround there a lot higher once we qualify people before we give them a sample. Yeah, those people then who receive the samples are much like, more likely to buy because they've engaged in the process. Yeah. Um, so now we find ourselves, right, we've, we're starting this conversation. Maybe they've gone quiet. Um, now we're in that space where all of us find ourselves in, the follow-up phase. Mm -hmm. um, I always refer back to um, when in this conversation with Ricky um, that I, Ricky Durant, I had at the beginning of my business, I was like, you know, just like I asked, what do I got to buy? I, I wanted to know too, what's the secret sauce here? What is it? Like, how am I going to build a business? Um, and he gave me some like amazing advice that um, I've taken with me through everything I do. And he said, don't be a weirdo. Yep. So everything we try to do, we run through that filter. Everything I say to people in my comments, I'm like, is this what I would say in real life? Yeah. I, I'm going to be authentic. I'm going to be me. But um, let's not be salesy or anything like that. Yeah, if you're not going to say it to somebody face to face, if you wouldn't say something to someone right to their face, then it shouldn't be said on, online. It should not be said in comments. It should not be said in posts. It should not be said in Messenger. So if you're not comfortable saying something right to someone, then it's, it doesn't, hiding behind your phone and sending it online is not the way to run a business either. So um, think, think about being you. You want your own voice. Find a way that's comfortable for you to express how you feel about this product. Um, and that's really what it's about. People are going to relate to you as long as you're listening and relating to them. So one of the key points here too is to give people space. So if you followed up, it's been 24 hours, you're having a conversation, all of a sudden they go quiet. Um, if, if the next point that you want to follow up is a week later, um, allow the person you're talking to to have that space. But yeah. be intentional. Know when you're going to follow up again. And in the meantime, in the meantime, use this as the perfect opportunity. So not all follow-ups have to be a message. It's like, hey, you want to buy my product? Follow-ups can be just keeping in touch with somebody, right? So you can keep in contact with somebody. Let's say you plan on following back up with them in a week. So in the meantime, you should be consistent on social media. You should be showing posts of yourself doing fun things, not just posts of like your dog or not just posts of your kids. If you're going to do that stuff, that's fine. Make sure you're in the picture too. People want to see you. So make sure you're um, visible on social media, consistent on social media and interact with them. Go to their page, see what they're doing. Like comment on stuff that they're doing. They want to see you interested in what they're doing. So in that time between follow-ups, it's a great 
time to engage with those people, make them feel like they're not just a transaction, that they're, you're really invested in who they are. Again, this is a relationship business. So people don't want to feel like a sale. They want to feel like you really care about helping them. And when I started doing this, when I started practicing this, going to people, being very intentional about going to people's pages and interacting with them, at first it felt kind of weird, but I just threw myself into it. And when someone posts something, I would sincerely respond. And that's following up. Um, one of the big industry standards um, that we've found um, in different research and uh, typically someone will not buy your product until the fifth, between the fifth and 12th touch. So what the touch is could be the sending of a tool. It could be a follow up. It could be, um, you know, them on the customer page while well, the customer yeah. page is sending testimonials to them. Each one of those is a touch. Um, us it's asking really directly. Exposure. It's an exposure. exposure to the product. And so if people aren't generally going to buy until that range, they've had some time to process. Um, statistically, um, the majority of people don't follow up once. Yeah. So let alone twice. Let alone twice. Let alone, times. yeah, make it to the fifth time where people, where the majority of people are ready to buy. Yeah. So that's super important to continue with the follow up. So um, we have people on our list that we follow up with since we started day one. We have had people join us as customers and in business who have been on our follow-up list for six months. And so don't lose sight of that. Um, we keep, everybody's different in their follow-up system. So I don't want it, that's a whole nother training. We do it very different. Um, but I keep a follow-up of every prospect I've ever had. So when it's their birthday, they definitely are getting a happy birthday message from me. When it's Christmas, I'm going to send them a message that says, happy Christmas. I hope you and your family are having a wonderful time. They are still on my list. Even if they said no, they're still on my list. I'm still paying attention to they, who they are. I'm still invested in them. Um, so that's super important because just because they say no or because they stop talking to you or because they seem disinterested doesn't mean that they will always be not interested. So keep loving on them. It's, you know, just keep following up that way, like organically, just like online. You don't have to keep sending them messages, like buy my product, but just keep in touch online, like keep engaging as if it was a friend in person, just because we're all hiding behind our cell phones does not take away the fact that this is a relationship business and we need to build and maintain relationships with these people. And when you're commenting on people's Facebook posts and you're interacting with them in Messenger, um, what Facebook is going to reward you, they're going to reward you with that. And what that means is they're going to now show your post to that person because Facebook is like almost like a living organism. Like it is <laughs> working to become more social. So I can tell you with 100% certainty when you choose to comment on somebody's post, um, they will then start to see your content. And yeah. I've, I've watched it work like almost instantly. Um, but, you know, immerse yourself in making the friendship and, and be authentic and be sincere and you'll get the benefit of that. Yeah. And one last, um, we've been talking for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> one last ninja tip, trick that I use for people that I have been following up with that stop talking to me for whatever reason, whether they're busy or they forgot, or for whatever reason, you know, you're going to get that. It happens a lot. You're not alone. It's frustrating for everybody, but you've been working with somebody, talking to somebody, you've given them lots of information, and then they stop responding. Super frustrating. Um, what I do a lot in that case, when I, when I don't want to bother them, right, I've sent them information, I've asked them questions they're not answering. Um, there's a feature in Messenger that you can actually change the color of the chat or you can change the emoji. So it's a really fun way to kind of get their attention without sending them another message. You can kind of change that. It's, I think it comes as a thumbs up emoji mm -hmm. regularly, but you can change it to like a happy face or a rocket ship or whatever, a heart, whatever you want. And then that, that thread of your message between you and that person pops back up to the top of their messenger. And it just shows this little quick blurb, like, you know, Dave changed the color of the chat and then it goes away. So, you know, they might not even know why this chat returned to the top, but it's just another way to jog their memory and, and start up conversations again. Yeah, you'd be surprised at how many conversations start back up again after doing that little trick, so. One thing I just wanna say um, as, we were, as we're getting close to the end here is if you're in this follow-up system and you find yourself emotionally attached mm -hmm. 
to one person um, buying your product or joining you in business, um, then you're not talking to enough people. And that was very difficult because we, I feel like we've all gotten in that space sometimes. Um, you know, to go to move from being emotionally attached to one person joining your business to feeling like you have so many people to talk to, you don't have time. Um, there's so many ways that you can build your business. Um, if you feel that way, that's a barometer that maybe you need to reach out to somebody and learn some different methods on how to expand your network. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to, I just want to offer that. Yeah. That's a whole nother training, yeah. but having your network growing in this process, um, keep adding people to your Facebook and keep meeting new people that your, your network should be building as, as you are going through the network you currently have. You're, nobody's stuck with their network that they have right now. It's just the network you have right now. And at any time that should be growing and building as you go. So um, I think we kind of covered everything we wanted to cover as far as acquiring customers and how we train our team about how to get customers. Um, there is a second part, I'll kind of keep this short, but there is a second part to how we built our business. Um, when we started uh, at the end of last year, we really went heavy on gaining customers. That was our big push. We actually loved that part about this business when we joined. We were told that the customer to entrepreneur ratio here was 10 to one at that time. And we kind of really loved that. Since then I've heard Ricky, I've heard 11 to one. And I think Ricky just the other day said it's now even 13 to one, which is Insane. crazy, pretty awesome. Insane. I actually did the numbers on our, on our personal business, on our entire team and ours are exactly 11 to one. So it's real. They're not just numbers that, you know, like Ricky's just throwing out there. These are actual numbers I, and that is definitely applying to our team. And I love that. So when we came in, that's, that's what we dove into. We dove into sharing our story and acquiring customers. Um, so our goal in the beginning was always, we're going to get 20 customers a month. If we can just get 20 new customers a month, we can keep this going. Let's see what happens. So doing that, um, I think by the third month we hit, month three, we hit gold and that was just by customers. And we had one entrepreneur on our team. We love her. She's amazing. She was our first customer. And then she also became our first entrepreneur. She just hit platinum last month and she's just amazing. Um, but in our third month, when we hit gold, we had one, we had that one entrepreneur, but we knew we wanted to hit platinum month four. We knew the next month we wanted to hit platinum. And at that time with the old uh, comp plan, um, we could only use 50% of one leg. So to hit platinum, which is 20,000 in volume, we could only take 10,000 maximum of Chelsea's leg. We had to figure out a way to come up with the other 10,000 volume ourselves and we only had customers. So we were like, what do we do? So once we hit gold that month three, the next morning we woke up and we were like, we got to start turning these customers into business partners. How do we do that? Um, so we just, that same day, we sent a message out to every single one of our customers. And we just simply said, how's it going? You know, like, how's it going? And they responded all different ways, of course, but anybody that responded positively, we sent them a message. Like if they said, give an example of something good that somebody said. I lost seven pounds and I'm not, you know, yelling at my kids today or my road rage was at an all time low or, you know, something like that. So, okay. So if somebody said they lost seven pounds and they were nicer to their kids, I would shoot them back a message. So these are already customers of ours. We have a relationship with them. I would shoot them back a message and it would say, oh, wow, that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. Do you know how many other people you could help just by sharing your story? Have you ever thought about sharing this with your family and friends? That's it. That's it. That's the message. And we sent that message out to every single one of our customers. And that month, month four, we did hit platinum. We actually turned, um, I think 10, 10, it was 10 or 11. 10, it was 10 or 11. Um, customers of ours into entrepreneurs and they're still on our team. They're still building businesses. That's how we still run our business. That's still how we bring in new, new entrepreneurs every month. We are constantly asking our customers to tell us their story and we try to help them envision that just by sharing their story, they can help so many other people. And that's super powerful because that's all we do here. Yeah. And we keep it, keep it super simple and let them guide them through the vision of what the product could be, then what the business could be. 
Um, but again, you know, when we get that response, we're just listening. Like yeah. we're here to serve. And uh, if you come from that, that place, um, you know, your business is going to take off. Yeah. And people that people do fall in love with this product and just like we did, um, it's the same, same thing, just like back to the beginning, right? When Dave was on the phone with Ricky Durant, we were ready to join the business and we hadn't tried the product, but Ricky said, nope, you're going to try this product first. He wanted us to have our own story. He wanted us to walk into this business with a passion to share it with other people. And that's what we do. That's what we did. And that's what we do now with the people that would join us. So we, we find our customers make our best entrepreneurs. They have the best stories to tell and they love to tell it. So it's, it's really easy to train somebody when they're already passionate about something that they use and want to share it with other people. So it takes a lot of the, the, there's no training here when you're just sharing your own personal story with people that you love. So, um, I, you know, I know we went through a ton of information. You know, I did see a couple of comments, like people want us to backtrack a little, but this is us. Like, this is our system. Like we're very intentional about our time. You know, like you, we've all got busy lives. You know, our kids are running around and we actually have one kid on the baseball field right now. So we're wrapping up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everybody that's on here. Um, I, I wish you all the best for your business. We're here um, if you want any of this information again. Obviously, it's on a replay. It'll be on a replay shortly and maybe in a couple of days, zoomreplay.com. But, um, you know, send us a message and we'll share with you again. Or if you want us to elaborate anything that we, we did here, um, you know, reach out to your upline if you're looking for help in any of these categories. But, man, I love the people that we work with. The people ab above us have have completely changed my mindset on the industry. Um, the people on our sideline, I love them just as much. Like there's just some amazing people here. So if you haven't really connected with somebody, yeah. you know, start looking to do that. It could totally change your business um, from the top to bottom. And, um, you know, from our hearts to yours, we truly, truly, truly appreciate your time. And um, just the fact that you get on these calls and invest the time into your business. Yeah. Um, puts you way, way ahead of everybody else. And, uh, you know, yeah. we're here to help any way we can. Awesome. So thank you for everybody for getting on. Um, you guys are amazing. This company is amazing what we're doing here. Don't lose sight of that. We are, we are spreading hope and sharing happiness and, um, we love you guys. Have a great Saturday. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day.